dear students uh, today i will be continuing with the topic of congenital heart diseases and the third topic or the third subject in the diseases is patent ductus arteriosus so what is ductus arteriosus first of all we must understand what is the structure that is known as ductus arteriosus now it is a connection it is a connection between connection between pulmonary artery and aorta in fetal life so this is normally present in fetal life now i will draw a diagram showing you the presence of structure now suppose this is pulmonary this is aorta first of all we should draw aorta then there is pulmonary artery which is from the right ventricle and aorta is from the left ventricle this is from left ventricle now what is this ductus there are three arteries which come from the arch of aorta that is first is common carotid artery and here it divides into two subclavian and internal artery then there is left subclavian artery i will draw with the different color this is left subclavian artery left subclavian artery it supplies the left upper limb now after this left subclavian artery origin there is a connection between pulmonary artery and aorta that is known as ductus say this is the connection now this green structure is ductus arteriosus this is ductus arteriosus now what is this this is normally present in fetal life because the lungs they are not developed or they are not working in the fetal life so whole of the blood from the right ventricle through this ductus goes into the aorta that is descending aorta and splices into the whole of the body of the fetus and the oxygenated blood now you will ask from where the fetus is getting the oxygenated blood as the lungs are not working so the fetus is getting the oxygenated blood from the umbilical artery of the mother umbilical artery placenta ke sath umbilical artery lagi hoti hai to mother ki jo oxygenated blood hai wahan se fetus ko oxygenated blood milta hai so this ductus arteriosus is a bypass for the blood from the right side of the heart to the left side of the circulation so this is normally present because 
the lungs are not working during the fetal life now as the child is born this ductus that is this structure gets closed in the first few days and maximum up to 3 weeks this gets closed because as the child is born the lungs start working and the oxygenated blood from the lungs goes to the left side of the heart through the pulmonary circulation and the child starts breathing as we breathe now in some percent of patients or children this ductus doesn't close during the period of 3 weeks in those fetal or in those children i should say this ductus remains patent it remains patent as such so this condition is known as patent ductus arteriosus now one more important thing to understand is that this ductus is present after the origin of left subclavian artery that means upper half of the body is supplied above this ductus by the oxygenated blood so the this ductus which is patent it supplies the lower part of the body through the descending aorta now this is very important i will let you know how it is important so the condition write down the definition patent ductus arteriosus is when the ductus arteriosus which is normally closed up to the 3 weeks of the child born it remains patent the condition is known as patent ductus arteriosus in adults now you will ask sir where it goes it doesn't go anywhere it becomes a sort of fibrotic structure it becomes a sort of fibrotic structure like this a thread like structure in adults in which it is closed or it becomes closed during the first 3 weeks of period so the condition i have explained when this ductus remains patent even after 3 weeks and doesn't close of its own it is known as patent ductus arteriosus now what is the pathophysiology now in patent ductus arteriosus now coming i will draw a diagram of the heart here now i will draw a diagram of the heart pulmonary artery aorta and these are mitral valves tricuspid valves this is left atrium right atrium left ventricle right ventricle now what is the pathophysiology suppose this is the ductus which is patent this is aorta and this is pulmonary artery now what happens since as you know the left side of the circulation is 
पॉजिटिव प्रेशर और हायर प्रेशर सर्कुलेशन एज कम्पेयर टू द राइट साइड बिकॉज लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल हैज टू सप्लाई होल ऑफ द बॉडी वेयर एज राइट वेंट्रिकल हैज टू सप्लाई अप टू द लंग्स ऑनली सो नाउ वट हैपन्स द ब्लड विच इज गोइंग फ्रॉम द राइट वेंट्रिकल टू द पलमोनरी आर्टरी एंड अप टू द लंग्स here it is added by blood coming from the aorta since aorta is a left sided circulation it has high pressure so high pressure blood comes to the pulmonary artery through the ductus and goes to the lungs for again oxygenation that means double oxygenation oxygenated blood from the left side goes to the pulmonary artery through ductus and again oxygenated in the lungs so it creates a shunt so this is this ductus creates a shunt that is shunt means abnormal blood flow through a structure now this shunt is from the left side to the right side as you know left sided circulation is high pressure circulation as compared to right side so this process continues for the next few years maybe up to 10 15 years or till the patient gets the disease advanced stage if he is not detected and not treated in time now this shunt leads to increased volume overload in the lungs wahan se bhi idhar se right ventricular se blood ja raha hai udhar se aorta se bhi aa raha hai to lungs mein kya hai volume overload ho jata hai jaise ki ye lungs mein banao aapko yahan pe ye lungs banaye ye heart aa gaya ye lungs mein bahut sara volume aa jata hai they are filled with blood what it leads to it leads to increased return to the right ventricle because these lungs vessels they become hyperplastic leading to pulmonary hypertension now because of this pulmonary hypertension it creates back pressure changes into the right atrium and right ventricle through the jugular veins inferior superior jugular veins as well as the right vein here the pressure is communicated to the right ventricle and gradually this right ventricle gets hypertrophied and the volume overload also occurs in the right ventricle because most of the volume from the lungs is coming to the coming back to the right ventricle so this leads to changes in the pulmonary vein and pulmonary vein leads to changes in the left ventricle left atrium and then left ventricle so this process when this pressure on the right side becomes more than the left sided pressure this shunt kya hota hai shunt ko it gets reversed here it was left to right then the stage comes when the pressure on the right side of the heart is more than the left side then the shunt becomes right to left reversal of shunt kya hai isko isko kehte hain reversal of shunt reversal of shunt now what happens with reversal of shunt the deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart goes into the aorta and leads to differential cyanosis this is why i asked you to remember that this ductus is present below the left subclavian artery yahan pe hota hai so yahan pe jaise shunt reverse ho gayi 
तो डीऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड विल गो टू द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी एंड ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड विल रिमेन इन द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी सो इट विल क्रिएट अ सिचुएशन वेयर द अपर हाफ ऑफ द बॉडी दैट मींस बोथ अपर लिम्स फेस एंड योर कंजक्टिवा ओरल बकल म्यूकोजा एक्सेट्रा दे रिमेन नॉर्मल वेयर एज लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी लोअर लिम्स Etcetera will produce cyanosis and clubbing. So that condition is known as differential cyanosis. Differential means in the same body we have two types of presentation. In the lower half there is cyanosis and clubbing because of reversal of shunt, and in the upper half. the process is not there so it remains normal so this is called differential cyanosis it is also known as reversal of shunt is known as eisenmenger syndrome as i have told you in the ventricular septal defect atrial septal defect reversal of shunt is another name of reversal of shunt is eisenmenger syndrome eisenmenger syndrome i have already discussed in the previous two videos of ast and video bst now what are the various clinical features now clinical features can be deduced from all this pathophysiology so first of all is breathlessness because oxygenated blood is not coming to the body so generalized weakness growth retardation mental stones getting delayed and repeated chest infection because of over flooding of the lungs with the blood and therefore the child has shortness of breath so first clinical feature is shortness of breath that means breathlessness second is repeated chest infection patient will come to the pediatrician with repeated pneumonias etc growth retardation and mental milestones are delayed and may be retarded gradually the reversal of shunt at a later stage may lead to congestive heart failure as both ventricles are affected so when reversal occurs there will be differential cyanosis there will be liver enlargement there will be ascites edema feet that means features of right heart failure and then it will involve the left side and that will become features of congestive heart failure so first it will be right heart failure leading to left heart failure and both of these leading to congestive heart failure so these are the clinical features of patent ductus arteriosus now i think you must be enjoying the video i have explained in detail the pathophysiology so please go to the google play store open the play store find out the video dr ashok kumar rana app my app is dr ashok kumar rana open it up subscribe to it like it and you can purchase the courses as per your need there are two courses for bms students as well as for bds students so according to your need even uh, bachelor of physiotherapy students even mbbs students can also look into these videos because in such a way most of the students are not explained in the classes so subscribe to the app coming back to the topic after this we have diagnosed clinically that clinical features are like this then coming to the physical examination how to detect on examination in the physical examination the most important finding is the most important finding is there is systolic diastolic murmur 
सिस्लो डायस्टोलिक मर्मर डायस्टोलिक अर्ली डायस्टोलिक how it will be listened in the stethoscope from the first heart sound the murmur is like this this is first heart sound second heart sound and then early part of the second heart sound again first heart. so this type of murmur continuous murmur from the first heart sound to the second heart sound and early part of the diastole this murmur is known as machinery murmur jaise machine mein aawaz aati hai machinery kaun si see saw carpenter jaise kaatta hai usko lakdi ko aawaz jo aati hai this type of murmur will be there in the examination of heart in the left side of the red this parasternal area so this is cisplo diastolic murmur that is also known as machinery murmur in the left upper part of the chest because of the persistent flow of blood from the shunt in the cisplay as well as early diast so this is the very important finding of examination then pulmonic component will be loud p2 that is called that will be loud leading to the possibility of pulmonary hypertension other than this there will be features of right ventricular hypertrophy there will be features of right heart failure like this jvp liver enlargement edema feet and later on breathlessness that is bilateral basal crepitations on listening from the back of the chest so these are important clinical features and physical signs important physical sign is cisplo diastolic murmur another important clue to the diagnosis is that is white pulse pressure white pulse pressure white pulse pressure now what is pulse pressure do you know pulse pressure most of the students may not be knowing it pulse pressure is systolic bp minus diastolic bp is equal to pulse pressure now normal pulse pressure is 20 to 40 mm of mercury taking view systolic 120 and diastolic 80 now what happens in patent ductus arteriosus systolic bp is say up to 180 and diastolic bp is say less 40 so what is the difference that mean the pulse pressure is 140 so that is called white pulse pressure and what it will produce it will produce water hammer pulse or collapsing pulse this i have explained in the clinical examination video which i have uploaded in the early part of the classes so this is called water hammer pulse so these are the important physical signs now coming to the investigations what are the investigations which are to be conducted first of all is the as you suspect get the x ray chest it will show pulmonary plethora then get the ecg ecg may show right ventricular hypertrophy and then left ventricular hypertrophy and conduction disturbances may be there then third is investigation of choice is echocardiography 
so these are the important investigations that is ecg that may be normal or may show right ventricular hypertrophy left ventricular hypertrophy changes then second is xhs that may show pulmonary plethora congestion of the lungs and as the condition advances hypertrophy of the heart and there may be basal crepitations on stethoscope auscultation on echocardiography we will find the presence of patent ductus arteriosus then the degree of shunt kitne pressure ka shunt hai and number 3 direction of shunt the blood jo hai left se right ko ja raha hai ki right se left ko ja raha hai it will show us the direction of shunt and according to the presence of shunt we are to treat the patient now what is the treatment the treatment remains first of all is medical treatment in the medical treatment management we are to in the early stage we give the child indomethacin that is the drug of choice indomethacin it helps in closure of the arteriosus ductus arteriosus this is the drug so first treatment remains medical if the child comes to you at an early stage second treatment option is surgical under surgical treatment it will be closure of the ductus by open heart surgery and number 2 by cardiac catheterization through which a platinum coil is placed in the ductus cardiac catheterization and through which a platinum coil cardiac catheterization mein kya karte hain catheter dala aur yahan pe ductus ke paas aa jayenge catheter ko leke aur yahan pe a sort of coil like substance that is platinum coil is placed here that will occlude the ductus without opening the chest of the patient so this is the procedure of choice nowadays nobody goes for open heart surgery cardiac catheterization this platinum coil is placed and the ductus is closed and patient becomes normal all these procedures that is medical surgical they are possible only before the reversal of shunt so again going and asking you to go to google play store open the app and dr ashok kumar rana subscribe to it like it and subscribe to my course if purchase the course you will find so many other important videos now coming back to the treatment this platinum coil closes the ductus permanently and the patient recovers however if the patient has reversal of shunt that patient surgical procedure is contraindicated reversal of shunt this surgical procedure is contraindicated it will not be possible to do the surgery and only what is to be done only medical treatment for the symptomatic procedure is done that is symptomatic medical treatment that means treatment of chf and then prognosis is excellent if the child is seen at an early stage medical treatment is possible and nowadays it's very convenient and easily done this platinum coil 
occlusion. This is called platinum coil occlusion. Platinum coil occlusion. So prognosis is quite good. Then coming to the prophylaxis, patients of ductus arteriosus who are having patent PDA, they should be given prophylaxis against infective endocarditis while doing any dental procedure or any type of surgical procedure on the patient. So concluding the topic PDA, it's very interesting topic to learn the pathophysiology and then to learn the treatment part especially with the modern technique that is platinum coil without opening anything the patient gets the relief so with this i will conclude the topic and in the final round i will be asking you to subscribe to my app dr ashok kumarana and like it from the Google Play Store and so purchase the course as per your choice. Patient, students of BDS, MBBS, Bachelor of Physiotherapy, BAMS students, anybody can purchase the course according to his need because most of the topics are common in all the courses in bachelor of physiotherapy all the course all the subjects of medicine that is mbbs medicine is given as a syllabus i have taught bachelor of physiotherapy students final year for full two sessions in the local physiotherapy college so you can also look into this video as per your requirement thanking you